In this video, we will be adding moving platforms to the game. And as you can see here, I just added a platform that moves up and down, but you're not restricted to moving up and down. You will also be able to move lift from, uh, from left to right or right to left. Um, and these moving platforms works exactly like any other platform in our game. So you can run past them without colliding with them. And you can also jump on top of them like so, so that you can jump on it and, and get elevated up, as you can see here. So that's exactly what we will be doing in the game. And also, um, we will also be able to set a speed so we can decide how fast the platform will move, of course. So the first thing we will have to do to make sure that we can move a platform is to create a new script. So go to your script folder inside your asset folder and right click, click create and select C sharp script. And I'm simply going to call the script uh, platform movement. So this script will make our platform move. So let's just try to open it up. And first of all, when we move around or when we move our platform around we will need to make sh uh, tell it where to move to and where to move from so if we look at one of our platforms here let's see if i can find one yeah this platform right here um the one that's close to the player that he's not standing on let's say that we want to move that uh, down then we need to save the start position for example and we need to indicate somehow where it needs to move towards and then needs to move back to the start position so we need to do all these things in the script. So the easiest way to do this is to make a reference object in the game world that the small platform would move towards and move away from again. Um, so we don't need to put the platform here and read, yeah, okay, the position is 10 point minus 19. Instead, we can simply place an object somewhere and the platform will move towards it. So to do this, we can click and create and select empty and we can rename this new game object to moving platform moving platform like this and then we can take our small platform here and make it a child object of the moving platform um or actually yeah yeah oh okay. yeah let's do it sorry let's just make it a child object of it actually um and then we can go to take our moving platform and make it a child object of the world again. So now we will have our moving platform as a parent object and the small platform as a child object. And then we can simply make sure that the world is the parent object of the moving platform. So now we have moving platform and our platform under it. And we can just rename this to small platform. So it doesn't have that two after it. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing we'll have to do is to create a reference object that this moving or small platform can move to. So you can click on the moving platform and you can go to the create function and click create empty. And we can move, call this position uh, B, for example, and make it a child object of the moving platform as well. So now we have our moving platform with a small platform and position B. So we need to place position B at the point where we want the small platform to move to. So we can move it a little down, move it here. So maybe we want the small platform to move to this position right here. So when you have placed it there, you can open up your script. Inside the script, we will have to add a couple of things because our Platform needs a start position and an end position. So we need to make a private vector free and call it uh, pus a. So this is the start position and we can make a private uh, vector free and call it position B. So these are the two positions that this, um, the, that this um, platform will move between. Okay. The next thing we'll have to do is to give it a movement speed. So make a private float called movement, but let's just, let's just call it speed, actually. And we need to watch this one in the inspector, so serialize it. So 
we have a serialized field here. Okay, so we need to make some functionality to make the platform uh, move actually. So basically, we can make a function called private void move. And inside that function, we will have to make sure that the platform moves from its current position towards uh, the next position. So we need to make some functionality that decides which of these two actually is the next position. So basically we can create a new vector free as well and call it next position. So next position is going to be equal to position A or position B, depending on what the last uh, current position was. So inside start, we say next position equals position B, for example. Oh, post B, there we go. Because position A is our current position and B should be the next position we have, right? So yeah, that's it. In move, we will have to say, um, we will have to take the transform of our small platform here. But the script is going to be sitting on the moving platform. We, we can actually take it now, take the moving platform script. If I could even see platform movement here and put it on the moving platform, it will need to control this one. So we need a reference in the script to the small platform so that we can actually change the position of the small platform from the parent object here. So we could go through the parent in the transform to get it, but it's easier just to make a reference. Let's so make a private transform and call it um, child transform. So this is my child transform and we can serialize the field as well. So when we have the child transform, we can go to move and say child transform dot local position equals new vector free move towards sorry not new uh, it's called vector free that move towards and then we need to give it the current position and the target position the current position is child transform dot local position not not the transform just that local position and the target is the next position and it should move with the speed multiplied by time dot delta time. There we go. So now we are setting our ch child transform position equal to, uh, or it, we make it move towards the next position here. Okay. So let's just make sure the next position is position B, but we need to set position B. Position B is, um, yeah, how should we do that? We need to make a reference to the actual other object. So let's make a private transform and call it transform B. So we make a reference to the actual transform um, on, on the other object. So make a reference to position B here, right? So we can go back in the script and make this a serialized field. So this transform B needs to be equal to position B. So we click on the moving platform. The child, uh, the child transform needs to be small platform. Transform B needs to be position B here. Now we have a reference to the child object and we have a reference to the position we need to move to. So let's say that position B dot uh, yeah, it is local position B is equal to and then we need to say transform B dot local position there we go so that's the B position the A position needs to be our own position so position A is equal to child transform dot local position so when we start the game sorry not B A here when we start the game regardless of the uh, platform's position it will always save the position of the current plat of the platform then it will say well where do i need to move to i need to move to the transform position b it's local position 
and then my next position is B, so this is where I need to move towards. And then we have the move function that will move the platform. So let's try to call move and update to make sure it gets executed. And if we save this, jump into Unity, make sure that we have a speed, for example, one. Then we can try to play, see what happens. And the platform moves downwards to the other position here, as you can see. Okay, so you can see it moved a little to the to the side here. I think it's because that the small platforms x platforms x is zero, and the position b is two point six. Let's try to set this one to zero, so that it doesn't go to the right. And let's try to play again. And now you can see that it moves straight down now. So make sure if you want to move it straight down, make sure that the position x is the same on both child objects here. Okay? Don't get confused about the angles position. The real thing you need to look at is the actual transform component on the position and on on the platform itself. Now that the platform can move from the top to the bottom, we will need to make sure that it can move back up again. So we will need to jump back into our script. And in here, we'll have to make an if statement in our move. And inside that if statement, we'll need to make sure that our um, position is changed whenever we reach our destination here. So we can actually also make a new function, private void, change um, destination. And that one needs to switch between next position uh, so next position is equal to A or B, so we can say next pos equals next position isn't equal to position A. So if next position isn't equal to position A, well, then we need to use position B or position A. So... Uh, so it takes next position and sets equal to one of the two options over here based on uh, the condition over here. So this is basically an if statement, right? So it says next position is equal to A or B. And it's based on if next position is different from A, it will use A. If it's equal to A, it will use B. So it switches between two positions here. Okay, so we need to use this function here. And we need to use it if vector free dot distance uh, what's called child transform dot local position is this or equal or well, see it actually needs to be um, next position and if that one is less or equal to 0 0.1 so if the distance between the current position of the platform and the next position is less or equal to 0 0.1 then we are basically at our destination right and then we need to change destination here so we switch between the two of them ah, if I could hit my keys there we go Let's try to save jump back into unity and run again now it goes down. When we reach the position in the bottom, it goes up. So now you should actually have a moving platform that can go up and down. Let's see if we can choose speed. It's maybe a little better here. Um, but you can play around with the speed yourself. Okay. So the next thing we will have to do is to make sure that our player can jump on it because yeah, it might look fine. You can see goes down it jumps a little up and down when it goes up it looks fine but if we for example put the speed at 2 then you'll see that the platform is faster than him him so he will be falling all the time on top of it so we'll need to do something about that also another thing when we stand here he might pop on top of it here and that's not the point right we only want to pop on top of our platform if we want to if we jump up through it um, like so like this but now he pops the top so in the next video, we will be fixing these small, uh, small problems with the player jumping onto the platform and floating on top of the platform. 
Remember that Inscope Studios is a community founder page, which means that all your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways. For example, you can click the top link to go to the Patreon page where you can get different perks and you can get all the projects that I've ever created for my YouTube channel. You can also click the bottom link where you can get any of my projects as a standalone product.